Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming to the com video, we have some details concerning AMD's R9-380X. Supposedly, the final specifications have leaked out, and we also have results of the GPU market share for the third quarter of, of course, this year. So, we're going to start things out with the R9-380X, because I suspect that's the one that most people are going to be interested in with this particular video. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, the 1080p market is kind of red hot right now. But the 380X is probably going to be, when it finally hits the market, about the best value GPU that you can get for the 1080p and potentially 1440p segment. And I mean, of course, 1440p in the entry-level sense. So the GPU is essentially a full-blown Tonga core, and that means, of course, it's going to be GCN 1.2. It is worth noting that GCN 1.2 is kind of an informal way of uh, referring to the architecture. AMD supposedly internally do not refer to it as such. It's going to be a mainstream market card, and therefore it's going to hit about 250 US dollars, which is not too bad. Obviously, it's going to have DirectX 12 support, color compression, which is something that was introduced with Tonga. What that basically means is that the memory bandwidth that you have, or that rather the performance of the card, is much more uh, refined when it comes to usage of memory bandwidth because the data that's being shunted around the card is compressed much better. Asynchronous compute support and all of the other bits and pieces that one would expect with a Radeon graphics card. Supposedly, the Tonga-based GPUs also have better tessellation, and that actually pretty much goes in with the reviews that we had um, with our own version of the Tonga, which of course would be the 285. So I've discussed a lot about what this could be, but what is the specifications? Well, it's looking to be a pretty damn impressive GPU to say the least. Um, it's going to hit around 4 teaflops of computing performance. It will be on a 28nm process, as one would expect, but it does have numerous uh, TDP improvements over the previous generation. Supposedly, it's going to hit around the 190 watt range. Now, I guess it does depend, obviously, on what eventually it ends up being clocked. Now in terms of stream processors, 2048. Not many surprises there. We kind of suspected that that would be the case with 32 compute units. Obviously 32 times 64 equals 2048. 32 ROPs, which is pretty standard. 128 TMUs and a clock speed of 1000 megahertz. Now that compares rather favorably to the 380 which, by the way, comes in at 1,792 stream processors, same number of lot ROPs, but slightly fewer TMUs at 112, with a 30 MHz difference in clock speed in favour of the 380X. You might think to yourself, well, yeah, that's not massive, but it does make the difference, and these um, small differences can really add up when dealing with a high fill rate performing games. Now, in terms of VRAM, it's not bad. 4 gigabytes GDDR5 with a memory clock of 5.6 gigahertz running at 256 bit memory bus, giving a supposed bandwidth of 176 gigabytes per second. Now, a couple of little caveats. I suspect some manufacturers are going to provide much better VRAM, and obviously that means that you're going to be able to overclock quite considerably. With the 285, for what it's worth, we managed to do quite a bit of overclocking. I don't remember exactly, in fact, let me just double check for you. Aha, that's at 6200 megahertz effective, which provides a bandwidth of around 200 gigabytes per second. And our core clock went up to 1060 megahertz. This, by the way, just for your records, is on a Club 3D version of the card. Um, and once again, that is the 285, and that did have a few um, compute units disabled, four to be precise. So once again, it looks a pretty damn impressive GPU for the price range, but obviously we'll have to wait and see. But I think we can kind of get an idea of what, how it performs anyway, just judging from the number of compute, um, or rather shaders enabled for the next generation card. Now, I did mention as well, we have some results regarding the market share for um, I guess you could say the discrete GPUs. So is it a good thing? Well, yes, actually, for both 
AMD and Nvidia we've seen a rather nice bump in um, shipments. That's right, AMD have increased their market share just a smidgen. Staying with AMD just for a second, as we know they've had some problems when it comes to discrete market, but the good news is for them it looks like with the combination of Fury, which would obviously be the um, R9 Fury, the Fury X, as well as the Nano, plus as well rather strong performance when it comes to the 300 series despite the fact that yes it is a rebrand but the price particularly when it once again comes to the mid-range i think all of those factors plus really strong directx 12 support has definitely made some differences in their sales essentially you're looking at a 15.87 quarter to quarter improvement now that's percentage obviously and this is overall unit shipments which is pretty good. Nvidia's have also increased by 21.39%, so basically 21.4%, which is also quite nice. The attach rate of GPUs, now these are both integrated and discrete for PCs, is up as well. So it was 130, it's now 138%, which is up 1.24% uh, from the last quarter, which is pretty good, which means Basically, 30% of PCs now have discrete GPUs, which is actually up by just over 3.5%. Not too shabby, right? Not too shabby. And the PC market is also increasing quarter to quarter, 7.55%. That's hardware. That's actually not bad. That's, that's quite healthy in terms of the PC market, in my opinion. Perhaps the main focus, however, for many gamers, <coughs> excuse me, gamers, is desktop shipments. Desktop shipments increased by around a third, 33.33% my crap you not for the last quarter. Now obviously when it comes to gaming most people are probably if they have the option want to go desktop anyway. That's not to say that Nvidia are doing badly, no 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 they're not. Maxwell is handling things rather nicely for them and as I've just mentioned a few seconds ago, Mac, uh, Intel, uh, sorry, Nvidia's own shipments for discrete desktop GPUs is up 26.35% over last quarter. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is regardless of NVIDIA or AMD, it would appear that we're doing a rather well when it comes to GPU shipments and it's not really surprising. We know that the attach rate or rather the gaming attach rate for Steam at the moment is at an all time high. We've had Fallout doing insanely well on PC. We've had Ubisoft and other rather large gaming, uh, I guess you could say, AAA providers saying that PC uh, market is actually doing really well for them at the moment. It's incredibly lucrative, which is a turnaround from, say, kind of early in Xbox 360's lifespan because many people thought that the PC market may not actually recover and it actually went quite low at one point. It's dangerously low where a lot of developers quite actively refuse to release PC ports. Now things are going rather well. I think some of this is to do with the fact that of course the next generation consoles are x86. Do we, can we keep saying next generation consoles? I'm worried when I say ge current generation everyone thinks Xbox 360 but I guess that's not the case now since these damn things have been out two years. Regardless anyway the PS4, Xbox uh, One are of course x86 which means developing around them the PC isn't as tough. Plus, I think just generally speaking, the market's doing really well for PC at the moment. And I think that's a really good thing. Obviously, we've got Steam that are plowing an ungodly amount of time and money and resources into the PC market. Microsoft are starting to push into the PC market as well. And with NVIDIA, people do criticize NVIDIA a lot for their various uh, game works and other shenanigans. But it is hard to argue that they have been good for the PC market, if nothing else. And I'm not talking about from a, uh, I guess you could say, com competition point of view, but from game development point of view, in terms of, you know, supporting the market and bringing in some innovation, and I guess that's kind of a good thing. AMD as well, same deal with uh, Mantle and other technologies, plus as well, I feel that with the next generation of cards quite quickly coming out, I mean, let's face it, we've got virtual reality being a big thing already on PC, but in the next couple of years, virtual reality is going to be absolutely huge. 
which is obviously promoting people and prompting people to move to the PC as well. And I think component parts, you can get a really good PC now for quite, quite cheap pricing. I mean, just in this video, we just discussed a, a GPU that's way over two times the power of the PlayStation 4 for 250 US dollars. You can get a really good system for around five to 600 great British pounds now. A really good system. So I think that combined with the just overall timings in the market, I think PC's quite healthy. That's not to say the consoles aren't doing well, but it is good for the PC gamers as well. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.